In this video we are going to be continuing our investigation of higher order derivatives and we're going to learn about the second derivative test and then we're going to practice using that second derivative test when given a function we find and classify the stationary points and we're going to classify them using a second derivative test and also locate the rest of the extrema and find the inflection points. So here we have the second derivative test. So it says if f of x has a stationary point at x equals c and the second derivative exists then so there's three three different options here so maybe our function looks like this maybe our function looks like this so we're gonna first go with these first two options so here's C here's C so at this spot we have a stationary point because we have a zero slope at x equals C and what our second derivative test says is that if the second derivative is greater than zero, that means our function is concave up this situation, then f of x has a relative min at x equals c. And when it's concave up, it does look like that really is a min. This looks like a max. And we can see here that it says if the second derivative is less than zero, here it would be less than zero because our function is concave down then f of x has a relative max at x equals c. Okay now if the second derivative equals zero then the second derivative test is inconclusive so we we can't tell whether it's a max or a min so let me show you a couple examples of what might happen. So maybe our function is x to the fourth and you graph, if you graphed x to the fourth, it would look a whole lot like a parabola. Okay, and so if we found the first derivative, we would have 4x cubed, set that equal to zero, and we know that we have a stationary point at x equals zero. And we can tell from our graph that this better be a min. But if we look at that second derivative, we're going to have 12x squared and the second derivative at 0 also equals 0. So here our test was, it, we, we fall into this third classification. The second derivative is 0 so it's inconclusive. So we know it's a min but we can't really tell that from that second derivative test. Another function that we could have is f of x equals x cubed and if we graphed this, this would look like that. And at x equals 0 we have a stationary point. Let's see that. So f prime of x is 3x squared. Set this equal to 0 and we know that x equals 0 we have a stationary point. But when we look at the second derivative we get 6x and that second derivative at 0 also is zero. So we can't tell what's going on here but I can look at my graph and I can tell from my graph that what's happening at x equals zero is that the graph is actually inflecting. So over here it's concave down, over here it's concave up. So maybe it's a min, maybe it's a max, maybe it's just an inflection point when the second derivative equals zero. But you, you can't always tell. So you have to use other means like actually graph it on your calculator or use the first derivative test. Okay, so here's our function. It says find the exact location of all the relative and absolute extrema and inflection points for f of x equals 3x to the fourth minus 16x cubed plus 24x squared plus 1. And we are looking at the interval from negative 2 up to 3. Okay, and we're supposed to use the second derivative test to determine if the stationary points are maximums or minimums. Okay, so if we're going to find the stationary points the first thing we need to do is find that first derivative set it equal to 0 and solve so our first derivative is 12 x cubed minus 3 times 16 is 48 x squared plus 48 x and we're gonna set this equal to 0 when I'm looking at this I'm noticing that each of my terms has a factor of 12 so I'm gonna divide the 12 out they all have factors of x too, but I don't want to divide the x out because then I'll lose one of my stationary points. So I have x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x 
equals zero and I'm going to factor here. So if I factor out an x then I have x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals zero and this factors as x minus 2 times x minus 2 so we have two stationary points we have x equals 0 and x equals 2 so to use that second derivative test we first need to find the second derivative so the second derivative is going to be 36 x squared minus 96 x plus 48 if we plug in 0, we're going to have 0 minus 0 plus 48, so we get 48. This is greater than 0, so that means our curve is concave up, and so x equals 0 is a min. We don't know if it's an absolute min or a relative min, but we do know it's a min. If we plug in 2, we get 36 times 4 minus 96 times 2 plus 48 and you're going to get 0. So our second derivative test was inconclusive. I'm going to scroll up here a bit. So our second step in finding the extrema is to um, find those singular points. And if we look at our derivative, there's our derivative right there, is there anything that would be illegal to plug in? and this is a nice polynomial and so there's no x's in the denominator nothing that's illegal so we have no singular points in step three we usually look for the endpoints and remember the endpoints that we were given were negative two and three step four this is new for us we're gonna find those inflection points so in order to find the inflection points what we do is we take the second derivative and our second derivative was our second derivative was 36x squared minus 96x plus 48 and remember those inflection points occur where that second derivative equals 0 so you're solving the second derivative equals 0 okay once again I have really huge numbers I'm going to divide everything by 12 so I have 3x squared minus 8x plus 4 equals 0 factor. So I have 3x, x, I need minus, minus 2 and 2. Let's double check. This is 3x squared. That's good. Minus 6x, minus another 2x. That gives us a minus 8x plus 4. So here we get x equals two-thirds and x equals two. So that x equals two is going to probably be an inflection point. So let's put all of our um, data into or all of our points into our table and I'm going to stick my function in my y1. Here I have my function in my y1. The next thing I want to do is is look at that table. So I'm going to go to my table. I'm in ask mode. That's what I wanted. Clear out the other stuff okay and now I have all my values in my table I'm gonna transfer them over here so at 0 I have 1 at negative 2 I have 273 at 3 I have 28 at 2 thirds I have a decimal number we're gonna find the fraction form of that and 2 we have 17 so we have our function in our y1 I wanna find what this is as a fraction so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quit out of here I'm gonna go there's and I'm going to put y1 of two-thirds. Notice I get that same decimal answer, but I'm going to tell my calculator to put it as a fraction. And I get 203 over 27. Okay, so now let's go through and classify these. So we know that this is an inflection point. And I'm pretty sure that this also is an inflection point. We know 0, 1 is some sort of minimum, but we don't know if it's a relative max or a relative min. Let's set our window and then decide on the rest of our classifications. So we're going to go from negative 2 up to 3. And I can 
uh, x scale of 1 is good. I, I can tell from my, my table here th some ideas for my, my um, y min and y max. Let's try putting y min at 0 and y max I, I don't want to go all the way up to 273 because I think that I'm going to miss seeing, but let, let's go ahead and try it. Let's go up to 275. And then let's go by 25. I think that by going so high, it's going to make it hard to see what's going on in here. Let's try it though. Yep, sure enough, in here I, I can sort of see what I'm looking for, but I would prefer to see this a little bit um, more clearly. So that window can change how things look. So instead of going up to 275, let's just go up to 100. Can you see how I have a much better sense of what's going on over here now? It doesn't look all so, as flat. Okay, so 0, 1, that's this spot right there. And I can tell from my graph that that is going to be an absolute min. Okay. Negative 2, 273, that's that point way up there, and I can tell from my graph that that is going to be an absolute max. 328, that's the end point over here. I can tell from that 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 is going to be a relative max because it, it looks like it's a high spot on our curve, but it's not our highest y value. Let's just confirm that these two spots really are inflection points. So 217, that's this point right here. So it does look concave up over here and concave down here. And then also 2 thirds, which is probably about right there, it does look like it changes concavity there. So to the left over here, we're concave up. To the right, we're concave down. So that's it for this video. See you next time.